In collaboration with BrainMind, let's review precision medicine for Alzheimer's disease. Alzheimer's disease is a very heterogeneous condition. Some people have said, when you've seen one person with Alzheimer's disease, you've seen one person with Alzheimer's disease. What we're learning about the condition is that when we deeply characterize the cognitive impairments in a person's individual biology, people will have the same disease from a pathologic perspective. From a biomarker perspective, they'll have amyloid in their brain and progressive cognitive changes. But that person will present differently. Some people will present strictly with brain changes related to memory loss. Other people will present with other changes related to maybe vision, depression, problems with executive or higher order function. So Alzheimer's disease is a very heterogeneous disease. And if we can understand why people develop different types of Alzheimer's, even though it's all really under the same umbrella condition, we can understand how to better treat them. So the philosophy that we take in the clinical practice of risk reduction for Alzheimer's disease is summarized by the ABCs of Alzheimer's prevention management. Using the ABCs to try to simplify our understanding of the approach to precision medicine in Alzheimer's, we take A, anthropometrics, B, blood-based biomarkers, including genetics, and C, cognitive function. And we try to hone in or understand all the most relevant aspects of Alzheimer's disease so we can create a targeted plan. Let's first start out by defining what precision medicine is. Precision medicine is an emerging practice style where we take a person's individual biology, a person's individual risk factors, a person's individual genes to understand what roads they may be on to a specific disease. In the case of Alzheimer's disease, there are dozens, if not hundreds of genes that contribute to Alzheimer's pathology. In addition, there are early life, midlife, and late life risk factors that contribute to Alzheimer's disease. The first critical component of addressing precision medicine in Alzheimer's disease is to understand a person's individual risk factors where we have a very detailed conversation with the patient. We then use the ABCs of Alzheimer's prevention management to craft a very precise plan. Let's go through this in more detail. A stands for anthropometrics, otherwise known as body composition. In all of our patients, we'll look at body fat, percent muscle mass, waist circumference, among other aspects that we can understand what road the person may be on to Alzheimer's disease. For example, as the belly size gets larger, the memory center in the brain gets smaller. The belly size is a surrogate marker for metabolism. Larger deposits of visceral fat, meaning fat accumulated around the visceral or internal organs, as well as around the waist, actually can slow down metabolism and possibly fast forward inflammation. If we can understand in a precise way why a person may be on the road to Alzheimer's, their belly size is larger, their blood sugar is higher, their metabolism is slower, we can intervene specifically across those biological risk factors, put them on a plan to reduce visceral body fat and optimize blood sugar metabolism in order to protect them against cognitive decline. When I think of metabolism, I think of memory. And when someone's metabolism is impaired by a larger belly size and visceral fat that accumulates and higher blood sugars, memory loss is something that we can see over time. When it comes to the B, blood-based biomarkers, the precision approach that we take is to look at cholesterol markers, inflammatory markers, metabolic markers, and nutritional markers. We don't just look at typical cholesterol numbers like HDL, LDL, triglycerides, and total cholesterol. We also look at advanced cardiologic measures 
most often performed by cardiovascular prevention physicians. Taking a preventative cardiology approach is very similar as taking a preventative neurology approach when it comes to Alzheimer's disease. Some of the metrics we follow include ApoB, LDLP, ApoA1, among others. When we use these subparticles, these cholesterol fractions, we can understand much more about the precise pathway a person is going down towards Alzheimer's disease, and then we can intervene our treatments accordingly in a much more specific way than just thinking that a person has a borderline or high LDL. We order these advanced metrics to understand further and intervene accordingly. When it comes to inflammation, there's a variety of measures in the blood that we can check. When it comes to metabolism, there are also a variety of measures from fasting blood sugar, hemoglobin A1C, fasting insulin, among others. Another hormone called adiponectin is related to body fat, and this is something that we can track over time. Further, nutritional biomarkers are essential to track. A person's omega-3 levels, which is a fat, a fatty acid, a brain-healthy fatty acid that is stored in red blood cells over time. You can measure these and understand the impact of the omega-3 levels. And if they're low, we can try to supplement them through diet or oral supplements to get omega-3 levels up to protect the brain. And specifically, certain people with certain genes, for example, the ApoE4 variant and low omega-3 levels will fast forward a person towards Alzheimer's disease. So if you understand, I'm taking different elements of the history of the patient, the person's nutritional levels, the person's genetics to carve a very precise plan based on precision medicine. Other markers that we assess in the blood include a homocysteine level. Homocysteine is a protein, an amino acid in the blood. And people that have elevated homocysteine levels actually have accelerated brain aging over time. People that are given B-complex vitamins, including B12, folic acid, and B6, in a very specific combination, can actually delay brain aging, delay shrinkage of the brain, and improve memory function. However, if a person has normal homocysteine in the blood, those B-complex vitamins won't be effective. Again, another key concept behind precision medicine, giving a specific targeted recommendation in a precise, individualized way. Taking that one step further, in research studies, specifically the Vitacog study, people that had adequate levels of omega-3 fatty acids in the blood preferentially responded to B-complex vitamins for homocysteine reduction. So taken in sum, we have to pay attention to omega-3 levels in addition to homocysteine levels in order to fully optimize or craft a prevention plan for that patient. We can use a variety of other blood tests including B12 levels, including cortisol, and including something called cystatin C, which is a kidney marker that really helps us understand a person's trajectory from normal to mild symptoms to Alzheimer's dementia. And then finally, we look at genetics in a very broad detail, take all this information together and triangulate the information with the third leg of the triangle, cognitive function, C. When we understand cognitive function, across memory, executive function, processing speed, and learning. And we triangulate this information between the body composition measures and the blood-based biomarkers. We can fine tune a plan to optimize a specific area of cognitive function accordingly. For example, one person may have below expected processing speed. Well, maybe we can optimize that processing speed by changing some of their biomarkers homocysteine, vitamin D. What about when someone has impaired executive function, higher order processing? If we can optimize their cholesterol numbers, then maybe we can optimize their executive function. So in summary, to put together an innovative and forward-thinking precision medicine plan for a patient, we have to talk to the patient, understand their A, Bs, and Cs, give a regimented, multimodal, multi-domain plan, and then follow them every six months or follow them over time, understand their response to this plan, and then continually refine or fine tune accordingly.